Happy Friday. Turns out 60s era muscle cars, no good as mud boggers. All right, so this is my 65 Oldsmobile F85. As you can see, there's mud caked in the tires. This thing was sunk almost all the way to the frame. Uh, the crossover pipe for the turbo underneath was actually dragging on the ground and plowing some mud out of the way. So she needs a bath really bad. So for those of you who know anything about this car, uh, this is a uh, 5.3. Uh, an all aluminum 5.3, 10 to 1 compression. Uh, it's got a single billet wheel 7875 on it. Uh, all the basic sloppy mechanics recipe stuff. Truck intake on there. Uh, the camshaft is way too big. This car is set up with an AR5 5 speed. Uh, that's just a shifter stick from eBay, but that's a shift knob from. Oh, you can see that thing came loose yesterday. <laughs> uh, don't mind my awesome wiring. That's on the list of stuff to clean up for this year, but I've had this car put together now for two years. Uh, I put quite a few miles on it. The only problem is the AR5 transmissions that I've put in here keep breaking. I keep exploding third gear. So today, what I'm gonna do is start the prep work for swapping out the trans for a Tremec TKX. I decided to go with the TKX because it's similar in size and fitment uh, to the AR5, so it should go into the trans tunnel without any modification. It's rated at 600 pound feet of torque to go through the transmission. Hopefully, that trans will live behind this engine. Uh, at 13 and a half pounds, this engine puts 575 to the wheel and close to 600 pound feet. So, I will be at the upper portion of the limit of that TKX. I hope, I'm hoping it'll be more solid uh, than the AR5s. The AR5s are a great transmission, they're budget friendly. And they do hold some power, but if, you know, pretty much what happens when anybody boosts something, right? They want to turn it up, they want to make more power, they want to keep beating on first it. Step, so first thing I'm going to do is pop that hydraulic line off over there. Uh, there is another hydraulic line that comes up here. It's the remote bleeder. So here's the, uh, here's the reservoir right here. This stainless line right there, that's the remote bleeder line. So I just have to fish that out of there and then disconnect the uh, pressure line down there, which is really hard to see. And then I can throw the car up in the air and pull the drive shaft and get ready to drop the trans. I think I'm actually gonna start inside the car. So in order to get this thing apart, shifter sticks gotta come off, shifter boots gotta come off. And then maybe the whole shifter mechanism has to come off the top of the trans. I know I have this transmission tucked really tight to the tunnel to try to keep it up and out of the way. So that's where I'm gonna start. All right, so shifter boots off. And you can see here, this is that really nice billet aluminum short shifter for an AR5. Uh, it doesn't come with the stick, that's from Amazon, but the shifter, this is from Fabit, Fabit Engineering, Fab Fabrication, I'm sorry. That's the same company that makes the adapter plates for these transmissions. Pretty sweet unit, just four bolts and that thing pops right off. Now, I don't remember if these are 10 or 12. Let's see. 12 it is. They do a really nice job. I think I got this one on a scratch and dent and they shipped it to me and I looked it over for a while and could not find a scratch or a dent. So that's the billet aluminum short shifter for an AR5. So that 
the clutch hydraulic line is probably really, really, really hard for you to see, but it's down here under the brake booster. Now it's a dash four stainless line. And the other one right here, oh, I'm sorry, that's the throttle cable, my bad. So the other line, this is the remote bleeder line. So I just have to disconnect the line from the clutch master and then feed the remote bleeder line that just gets fished out i have it tucked up over here just so it doesn't fall and touch on the ground okay so just to keep things simple and you can actually see that clutch line now right under there so that is the pressure side of the clutch and all i did was crack that loose so that i can undo it from underneath the car i can just reach up and unscrew that line that way i'm not pouring uh, clutch fluid or you know brake fluid everywhere while I'm taking the drive shaft out, taking the exhaust crossover out, all that stuff. Here's a quick look at the underside of this car. And yes, she's covered in mud because I sunk it in the driveway. So a lot of this probably looks worse than it is, but here's the crossover pipe that now obviously needs to be redone. So I'm gonna have to cut that out, but it has to come out anyway because here is the AR5 transmission. I don't know how well you guys will be able to see that. Here's the Fabit adapter plate. This is a 4L60 bell housing. And here's the AR5 itself. And this is the cross member, the factory Oldsmobile cross member that I sectioned down, cut and refit to work with the AR5. I gotta get the exhaust out of the way. And then I can drop the drive shaft. And then I can get that crossover pipe out of there. And then we can disconnect the e-brake cables here. Well, looks like I found the uh, limit of the baby harbor freight pry bar so have to grab a bigger one uh, i think when this drive shaft was originally measured the car wasn't sitting as low as it is now and i think they cut the dimensions really really tight so this thing's just a little snug coming out of here So if you look over here, uh, you'll probably notice that the car is clean and on the ground. And you're probably already guessed, the new transmission is in. And no, I didn't film it. So picking up where we left off, the Tremec TKX is now installed and it's broken in. Today I'm going to get prepped and get started for the cam swap. This car currently has a sloppy stage three camshaft, which is way too big for this engine and I overcammed it. So I have on the shelf somewhere over there, I think. Yes, I have the sloppy best cam, which is quite a bit smaller. So I'll put the uh, cam specs on the screen here to kind of give you guys a comparison. Essentially what I want to do is swap the camshaft into this car and then I'm gonna have to change the tune obviously quite a bit because the new cam is quite a bit smaller but the tune that's been in this car for three years has been really really good uh, it's very safe and it makes good power uh, the only issue being drivability and that is pretty much all the fault of the large cam I am going to pull the cam with the heads on and I've seen a couple different methods using dowel pins to hold the lifters up, or some guys have even said a straight piece of 5 16 brake line. I think that's the route I'm gonna go. So, all right. So, hood's popped here. This is just kind of a quick overview of the engine bay. You guys have seen this before. I showed it earlier. It's a billet wheel Gen 1 7875. That's the old school guy, the original. Uh, this is an intake air temperature sensor pipe from uh, formerly A21 Bravo, now Blazer Builds. Bought that from him. Got an intercooler tucked up here in between the radiator and the front bumper. So in order to do this cam swap, 
Unfortunately, I have to drop the coolant for sure. Pull the radiator out. I have to pull the intercooler out of here. I think I can leave the intake manifold, but I will have to take off the alternator as well as the power steering pump. I think I'll just take that whole bracket, this whole bracket that holds the uh, power steering pump and the alternator. I think I'll unbolt that and just lean it off to the side. I will have to disconnect my turbo oil return, which is actually tapped right into the front of the oil pan. I don't know if you guys can see down there. It's that guy right there. So I think we'll get started here, maybe drop the coolant. I think first we'll disconnect the battery. That was a reverse light. Now it's my battery cutoff switch that I need for the track. Unfortunately, these aluminum radiators from Speedway do not come with a petcock. So the only way to drain them is to pop the lower hose. Uh, mine you can probably see right down here, except for the shadow. This is the lower hose right there. Really quick, a life hack that I learned from Pole Barn Garage that all of you should use. An excellent drain pan is a mortar mixing tub. This thing is like, I don't know, six, eight inches deep. This one's probably 18 inches by two feet. And it does a really good job for catching fluids. You can level up too by putting one of those drip trays under there. So we'll just pop one of these off. Let's see how much of a fight this thing gives me. Ooh, yeah, that sucker's on there. Just trying to use the channel locks to break this free. <laughs> I did piece together radiator hoses when I put this thing together three years ago because it seemed like I could not find the right pre-bent hose. So I put a union in between. Just spend a little more time walking through O'Reilly. If you're there as often as I am, they'll let you walk in the back. How do you feel about just cutting this? You guys grease? your radiator hoses before you put them on. I don't. I saw a dulcet do that once on a roadkill garage. It would really help in this case. <laughs> Comment down below if you guys do that stuff. Or if you just put them on there dry and they get stuck like this. Don't you just love when the screw of the worm drive clamp just backs when the screw of the worm drive clamp just backs right out of there. I need a new one of those. Well, at this point, I'm going to have to cut that hose off of there. There we go. Nothing that a utility knife couldn't handle. All right, well that finishes draining. I'm gonna get rid of my super cheesy radiator hold down brackets. I think these are two uh, half inch bolts. All right, next I think I'll take off the silicone elbow here going into the throttle body. Get rid of the intake air temp sensor connector. And probably pull the other silicone coupler down there to just take this whole pipe out of here. Probably go after this upper radiator hose and the steam port line. Got a couple other zip ties to cut here. I'm gonna try to pop it off right here and get that to shoot right in the pan. It's two for two. Sure would be nice if they came off. You might be able to tell just how much of a hurry I was in when I put this car together the first time. The radiator fan is wired in right here. Here's the ground, I'm sorry, that's a tube, it's vacuum line. Here's the ground, it goes behind the uh, power steering line there. Here's the hot, comes over to a relay and it is just soldered, heat shrunk right to the relay. So. There's no way to remove this radiator without cutting those wires or removing the fan from the radiator. And that's just a cheapy AutoZone one. It works, I'd like to replace it, but yeah. 
I definitely put this car together in a hurry. I was trying to do a build over the winter and springtime came, which is kind of what happened this year with the transmission. So yeah, definitely kicking myself for some of that stuff. All right, everybody. So finally, finally got my new camera. No more cloudy iPhone lens. So hopefully this picks up a little bit better audio. Hopefully it picks up a little bit better video. Hopefully you guys get a chance to actually see what I'm working on. And maybe this thing will just be easier to deal with in general. So these wires here, yeah. Make better choices than me. Take the extra five minutes and wire this in better than I did. It'll save you a lot of headache when it comes time to inevitably making changes or having to fix something. So I do have an extremely custom overflow jug that has been on this car for three years. I was given this by the owner of VL Performance. We had a dyno day there and he said I needed one of these to run on the dyno. So we put this hose from the overflow into the nearest water bottle that he could find. Luckily, it's quick disconnect. We can leave that right in the car. So now that the radiator fan is disconnected, uh, it's time to pull the radiator out. First time this radiator has been out in three years. All right, next step is to pull this belt off. Should be 15 millimeter. Pop that on the tensioner. Bend that out of the way. Pop the belt. And then, of course, drop your wrench right into coolant. Next thing, we got to pull the alternator harness or plug off of here that just comes off the back got the heavy gauge wire which is going back to the battery back here yep sure to bash that elbow on the hood hinge next with the alternator is should be just two 15 millimeter bolts right here those are through bolts, they hold it into this giant bracket. So I'm gonna pop those off and then probably pop off the remaining 15 millimeter bolts there that hold the rest of this accessory bracket on and get it moved out of the way. I'm deciding to not even mess around today. I think this will work pretty good, uh, unless it doesn't fit. In which case I am gonna mess around. Remember, I still have that uh, tub of coolant down there, so everything's gonna drop into there. I'm not careful. Okay, so we're just gonna gently extract this without breaking anything else. Okay, okay. seems pretty good. A bodies are really nice. They have this beautiful inner fender shelf right here. It's awesome, actually. It holds all kinds of tools. I mean, it's good for a, good for a two foot pry bar. All right, one alternator. Just because my memory is great, I'm sure all of yours is, I'm gonna put these bolts back where they came from. Otherwise, I will forget where they went. I will lose them. Let's see if Big Bertha will fit down in here or not. That's okay. We'll go to the short well. I realize that this is overkill for this, but I just really don't wanna even mess around today. Put that somewhere I'll remember. Two, three, four. So I believe this whole mess should just slide right out of the way. Yeah, I'll go after the water pump now. Get you in here so you can see that. So LS water pumps, depending on what side or what kind you have, I think they're all the same though, how they bolt to the block, at least for the Gen 3 and 4s. There's three bolts over here. There's three bolts over here. I did just notice that I forgot to undo the heater core lines, so I'm gonna do that quick, and then I'm gonna pull 
uh, the whole water pump out of here. All right, let's readjust our mortar, mortar mixing, or morting mixer. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep, mortar mixing pan. I call it the best freaking drain pan I've ever used. If you don't have one, you should get one. Six bolts here. There it goes. pump out. All you people safety conscious look away. Look at the size of that guy. Holy cow. These LS motors man they don't mess around. I think next what I'll do is take off the air filter for the turbo and then take off this silicone coupler here which comes into the intercooler. I'm going to take that guy off and then the intercooler is held on with two uh, cheesy L brackets. Look at that. Man, billet wheel on that turbo still looks awesome. Look at that down in there. Man, that thing looks awesome. This thing's been boosting for three years now. Just gonna grab that T-bolt clamp right there, and then this uh, intercooler is ready to come out. Intercooler's out. So my goal here, now that the intercooler and radiator is out, I am hoping that I have enough room to sneak the cam out of the front of this thing. Here's the new cam, and it looks like, especially with the timing cover removed, I'm gonna have all kinds of room to get that cam out. All right, this is the oil drain line right there. Just gonna pop this guy off. Get it out of the way. All right. Got the LS balancer puller here. This is an Amazon special. Pretty sure they're all the same anyway. Grab the, the bolts out of the timing cover. Okay, there are actually two more. There are two more bolts that hold the timing cover in from the oil pan at the bottom here. Okay, looks like those came out. Now with a little condensing. There you go, there's a timing cover. These aluminum and O-ring gaskets are reusable and I intend to do just that. I will put a little bit of RTV in the corners, which is just a good idea. So uh, yeah, just gonna reuse that gasket. I'll get this uh, RTV off of here. Next thing we're going to do is rotate the engine over just so that the cam and crank are at the timing marks. Uh, and to verify that, I mean, LS is the timing cover, or sorry, the cam gear and the crank sprocket. Both gears should have the dots facing each other. I'm pretty sure that's what the timing, that's in time, is when the cam gear dot and the crank sprocket dot are right here facing each other. So I'm gonna crank this over until I get there. It might be kind of hard to see. I don't know if I'll be able to show you. I'm not gonna remove the oil pump. All right, gonna have a little bit of a change of plans here. 
Now, I don't know how well you guys can see this, but I've marked the timing chain with two marks by a Sharpie. I will also mark the timing chain where the cam alignment dowel is. And this is where I'm going to remove the cam gear and pull the cam out. But before I do that, I am going to loosen the rocker arms on each side. That way there is no tension on the lifters or anything like that. So I'm just gonna crack loose uh, all of the rocker arm bolts here. Yep, make sure to drop hardware all over. I'm trying to remove as little as possible to do this. So that's why there's still a bunch of stuff in the way. But, oh, don't do that to me now. That one's wanting to strip. Only reason I'm doing this is to relieve the tension on the lifters so that when I take the cam gear off, I can just leave the lifters up in the head or in the block. All right, I'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll be ready to take the cam gear off. And try to get this cam gear out of here. <clears throat> I believe that it's actually turning the engine. <laughs> should be able to just slide right off. Of course, just turn the camera off and that's when everything starts working. So uh, yeah, as soon as uh, I turned the camera off, I found a way to kick the gear just past that timing chain, uh, chain dampener and out it came. So next I'm gonna loosen all of the uh, camera tanner plate bolts and then we're gonna spin the cam to set the lifters up in the block. Oh, why would you do that to me? Fucking strip out. Is that just the wrong size or what size is it? This size? 3 16 No. Okay, so the lower two bolts, or the sorry, the bolts on the side here that held that timing chain damper on, they stripped out. They were Allen head bolts. So what I had done is started to drill through the head in hopes that I could just drill the head flush and break it off and then back the screw out with like a vice grip or something. What ended up working was taking a chisel to the head and I actually got them to break free. So now the cam plate, cam retainer plate can come off. There you go. Now the cam is free and as you can see the timing chain dampener is out of the way. I may or may not put that back in, it's kind of a pain. But now I think I can see the top of that crank sprocket so I'll double check that my timing marks are in the right place. In order for uh, our rods to go in these two holes to hold the lifters up we first have to make sure that the lifters are in fact up so there's no tension on the valve train right now everything's been loosened so I'm going to put the cam gear back on back on the cam here and then I'm going to throw one bolt in it and then I will use the cam gear to spin around I'll spin the cam a few times to make sure that all of the lifters are up in the bore. May actually have to move the rocker arms off. All right, one more time. Go around with the cam. One way to tell that the lifters are all stuck up in the bore 
is if you rotate this around, you shouldn't see any rocker arms moving up and down. So next thing we'll do is I'll cut up my, cut up my brake line and shove those in here. I uh, see I have one, I do have one that, uh, one lifter that does not want to stay up. So that'll be, yeah, may have to wiggle this around a little bit. All right, so what I did was I bought a section of four foot long, five sixteenths diameter brake line, and I cut it in half. So you can see I still got the flared ends on this side. So these are going to be my dowels I'm going to shove in the block to keep the lifters from dropping. So that's what I'm up to now. Okay. So on the driver's side, none of my lifters are falling back down. So I'm going to insert this piece of brake line into the oil galley, it looks like. Hmm, maybe not. Let's see here. Seems like there's going to be a tight fit in there. Try some lubricant on the brake line there. See if that helps it slip in there a little easier. Or if we're still going to have this kind of problem here. Seems like there it's going. But not all the way. Not smoothly. Probably need some more oil in there. Okay, so got the rods in there. Uh, I'm not feeling incredibly confident about it. So we're about to see if I'm going to be uh, pulling this engine or at least pulling the oil pan. I'm going to move you guys over here. Try to see if I can't sneak this cam out of here. Try to be super, super gentle. There she is, sloppy stage street cam out. Got to work on prepping the other one real quick. All right, so here is the new cam. And I just put a little bit of assembly lube on there and I'll just oil up mainly the lobes and stuff as we go in. Get a little bit of something on there. This is a full roller lift, you know, roller lifters, everybody knows that, so. Just be real careful. Get them to pop through, and then put a bunch here on the journal. off here there we are all the way to the last journal there we go man that that was stressful if any of you guys have ever done this job uh, with the with the heads on and lifters in the engine and stuff that is a little bit of stress there Okay, so new cam is in, timing chain damper is back in there, and 
cam sprockets on, timing marks are lined up. So I think we're all ready to go to put this thing back together. I am going to put the rocker assemblies back in, torque those down, and then roll the thing over two or three times to make sure that everything looks good and that the timing marks are still lined up. All right, LS rocker arm bolts, pretty much everybody says, torque them to 22 foot-pounds. So I've got my half inch torque wrench. My three ace one is broken. So we're gonna start in the middle and run this down to 22 foot pounds. much. Probably should have ran all these down before I started this. Oh well. And I am starting in the middle, working my way out. Making sure the rocker is centered over the tip of the valve. So what I'll do is I'll torque all these down to 22 foot-pounds, roll the motor over a couple of times, and then torque them and check them again. All right, so rolled the motor over twice, checked rocker arm torque on both sides. We're still good on all rocker arms. Timing marks are still lining up. So at this point, we're going to clean up the mating surface between the oil pan and the timing cover right here at the corner so that I can get a fresh little bead of silicone in there. I'll clean up the timing cover the same. Uh, get the timing cover put back on and the harmonic balancer, and then get this thing reassembled, and we'll pick up there. Uh, timing cover's back on, water pump's back on, accessory bracket's back on. Uh, there are a couple of things that I do need to run to the parts store to get. I wanna get new valve cover gaskets. I think mine are kinda old, uh, but the cam is in. Timing all looks good, timing chain anyway, so I think that's where I'm going to stop for this episode. Uh, it's getting a little bit long and I want to get this one out. So next time I'm going to finish up assembling the rest of the front end of this engine. I have to solve a couple of other problems. I do need a new little radiator hose because this cobbled together mess is not going to work anymore. So I may have to make a couple trips to the parts store, but in the next episode, you're going to see the conclusion of the work, putting this back together, the first start and hopefully we'll get some exhaust clips for it and then get a little bit of video driving it around and making tweaks to the computer. So thanks for watching. Uh, I really appreciate everybody commenting, watching the videos, all the subscribers. We are up to 74. That's right, we're edging up on 100. So again, this is a lot of fun for me to do. Uh, it is a lot of work. Weekly content's probably not gonna happen much longer, but I will do my best. So thanks again. And I'll see you in the next one.